assalamu alaikum students i hope that you all will be fine and my prayers my best wishes are always with you that allah almighty keeps you uh, with uh, good health and spirit today i'm going to discuss culture and imperialism by edward said and i'm sure that culture and imperialism is not a new book for you as well as the author edward said and you are familiar with his name with his work with his uh, style and uh, the important uh, the most important is his philosophy so today uh, i'm going to discuss culture and imperialism uh, under the umbrella of post colonial studies and uh, we will discuss the important points of culture and, and imperialism today let's start our lecture Here I'm going to discuss Edward Said as a public figure instead of his personal biography, his education, or his career. But I want you to uh, read it in detail so you can uh, very well understand his biographical uh, or his personal ideology uh, that is presented in his work. As we know that Edward Said is considered as one of the most important literary critic and philosopher of late. 20th century and he was the professor of literature at Columbia University and founder of academic field of post colonial studies and uh, there are also many other post colonial uh, critics like Antonio Gramsci Franz Fanon and Michael Foucault uh, and we see his philosophy matches and influence with all these post colonial critics but the difference lies in Edward Said work that he carefully con considers that many other writers many other authors or critics are portraying the values and opinions of time and and uh, they are not making any political argument but edward said is making a political argument that is why he is considered as cultural critic uh, his work like orientalism is a critique of cultural representative and um, his uh, bicultural studies his bicultural perspective is also very important that highlighted the gap of cultural and political understanding between the western world and the eastern world especially about israeli and palestinian conflict and we all know that this conflict was begun in 20th century and, and there was a ongoing struggle between israel and palestine uh, and various attempt had made to resolve this conflict but this partial peace process ends in 2019 so edward said was the only uh, political or cultural critic who has highlighted all these aspects that is why he is also considered as a controversial member of palestinian national council but he was renowned public intellectual as well he was renowned uh, because of his criticism of israel and arab countries especially the political and cultural policies of muslim regimes who acted against the national interest of their people and uh, edward said was the only uh, critical or uh, philosopher person who advocated the establishment of palestinian state to ensure equal political and human rights for palestinian in israel including the right of home return and in the last i want to discuss that uh, he defined Uh, his oppositional relation with status quo as the remit of public intellectual who has to sift to judge or to criticize or to choose so that choice and agency return to individuals as man and woman so he was the person who reconstruct his relation with status quo society
Students, I'm pretty much sure that you have no idea about this fact that Edward Said was an accomplished pianist and with his friend Daniel Borenboy, he also co-authored a book titled as Parallels and Paradoxes, Exploration in Music and Society. And this book was the compilation of their conversation and public discussion on music. And you will be amazed to know that besides his uh, cultural criticism and political activism, he, with his friend Daniel Borenboim, he jointly received Prince of Austria's Award for their work in improving understanding between nations. Wow, that is very, very great fact for me. So, uh, the next fact is that in 1999, both Edward Said and his friend Daniel Borenboim developed the best Eastern Damien Orchestra. And it was based in Spain, consisting of musicians from countries in Middle East and of Egyptians, of Iranian, of Israel. And they perform and promote mutual reflection and understanding. That is so amazing. Edward Said, as we know, is a towering figure of his studies and his contribution and in this slide I am going to discuss some of his major contributions, some of his major work. Edward Said's first publication is about Joseph Conrad and the fiction of autobiography that was produced in 1966. This book was actually the expansion of doctoral dissertation he presented to earn PhD degree. Then his next book is the Beginnings, Intentions and Method that was published in 1974 and that book is about theoretical basis of literary criticism. Then the very famous book, The Breakthrough of His Career, the, the best seller book, Orientalism that was produced in 1978 and uh, we will discuss uh, Orientalism uh, in detail in our next slide. Then uh, Said's later works include The World, The Text and The Critic in 1983, Nationalism, Colonialism and Literature, Yeats and Decolonization in 1988, his and other work, Culture and Imperialism, that was produced in 1993. Actually, uh, Culture and Imperialism was hailed as long-awaited as seen as the direct successor to his main work, Orientalism, and uh, it is also considered as sequel of Orientalism. Uh, so, uh, we will first discuss Orientalism, then uh, uh, we will go uh, through in Culture and Imperialism. Okay, and uh, next book, Representations of the Intellectual, Humanism and Democratic Criticism in 2004. And the next is on late style in 2000, 2006 and in 2010 he produced uh, Criticism and Society. Edward said being a philosopher, a post-colonial critic and academic scholar, he was also a, an awardee person. He was awarded more than 20 honorary university degrees in the course of his professional career. The first one is Bardian Prize by Harvard University. It is prestigious award given for the work in English language and many other disciplines like natural sciences in Greek and Latin as well. But uh, Edward Said was awarded by Bardian Prize uh, for his work in English language. And he twice re received a Leonin Trilling Book Award and uh, another award is Bellic Prize of the American Comparative Literature Association, AC, 
L A. And uh, this award is given to those scholars who uh, works for the connection of different uh, literary traditions and cultures. And uh, this is the point which I want to share with you that uh, he is the person who was awarded um, being the scholar or philosopher. But the main idea was that his work connects several different literatures, several uh, different traditions and cultures. And because of all these works, he won Lifetime Achievement Award in 2001, that is Lenin Literary Award. In 2002, he was awarded by Prince of uh, Austrius Award with his friend Daniel Borenboim in the discipline of music. Student, he was the first U.S. citizen to receive Sultan Awais Prize for cultural and scientific achievement in 1996 and 1997. His autobiography, Out of Palace, that was produced in 1999, that was bestowed by three awards. The first one in 1999, New Yorker Book Award for Nonfiction in 2000. Anisfield Wolf Book Award for Nonfiction and third one is the Morton Dewin Zebel Award in Literature. In this slide, I'm going to discuss a major work of Edward Said that is Orientalism. And as I told you that this work uh, is considered the breakthrough of uh, Edward Said's career. And probably Orientalism accounts for its international bestseller status. So let's take a quick look on, on the theme or the idea of this book, Orientalism. First of all, uh, let's discuss the word Orientalism, the title of this book. The word Orient has a diversity of opinion, but according to this, Orientalism is basically a study of Orient countries. Orient countries uh, are said to be the East, Eastern countries and uh, geographically they are less developed countries uh, in which the part of Middle East, North Africa and Asia um, are considered to be the Orient countries. While uh, Occident countries are Europe, uh, France, Germany, England and Canada and these are basically the ruling countries. So, the theme of this book is Occident versus Orient. And uh, due to this book, Said became an established cultural critic. As this book describes and analyzes uh, of Orientalism, according to him, the word perceives Middle East as a source of false cultural representative and this idea was discussed in the first part of his book Orientalism under the topic the scope of Orientalism. He discusses cultural and political difference that West is superior, developed and civilized. That is why uh, they have authority to colonize any part of the world and in this way they increased racism and exploited weak countries economically, politically, educationally, uh, religiously uh, in every aspect under the grab of uh, civil, uh, civilizing them. So instead of civilizing them, they make them more weak. So the first part of this book, The Scope of Orientalism, uh, it describes how westward rule eastern world and the present condition of uh, Orient countries and um, Orientalism was ultimately a political vision of reality whose structure promoted difference between familiar, that is west, and the strange countries that are the Orient countries. So, 
the familiar world is associated with the west and the strange uh, countries are the east countries so the western representations and the present situation of east uh, this is the main agenda of edward said while in the second part orientalist structures and restoration in this part edward said discussed 19th century literature and the role of authors in 19th century literature that how they justify or negate orientalism and how west is picturized in 19th century and um, in in 19th century the themes are freedom nationalism reflection of social and political scenario so the second part um, expose the western ideology and the psychology and the historical and literary way that how writers uh, of 19th century wrote about orient countries while the third part orientalism now discuss the west is the best west is the source of inspiration and in this part edward said discussed french and british orientalism so this book shows his ideas on orientalism and the occident the ruling occident countries and this book argues that colonialism was not only a system of political rule but also the view uh, which is based on west is superior than east and how west occupy some countries under the topic of orientalism so uh, we can say that uh, this book is actually a scientific study of east and how west sees and evaluate and values east and how middle east countries uh, are are uncivilized and they are called the uncivilized countries or the orient countries in this slide i'm going to introduce you the work culture and imperialism and uh, in this slide uh, i'll start with the title culture and imperialism that uh, edward said uh, choose the title from um, from two older works culture and anarchy by matthew arnold that was produced in 1867 and 68 and an other work is of raymond william culture and society in that was produced in 1958 so uh, the title is referred to these two works of matthew arnold and raymond william and uh, the, uh, this book is basically the collection of essays and you can say that it is a sort of debate uh, that was published in 1993 and uh, this book is considered to uh, be the sequel of orientalism because it is highly influenced by his work orientalism uh, actually edward said traces the connection between culture and imperialism and he started with with his argument that uh, from the age of empire when after world war 2 when most of the colonies gain uh, independence so uh, imperialism continues to exert considerable cultural influence till the present and to be aware of this fact he says that it is necessary to look at how colonist and imperialist employed culture to control distant land and people so it traces the connection between culture and imperialism that how we orient uh, people how we eastern people uh, look west as a symbol of uh, a fashion as a symbol of success as a symbol of civilization progress and each and everything so uh, Uh, culture and imperialism provides us a uh, a ongoing conversation a debate and uh, over over our own
psychology our history our philosophy and uh, and uh, other literary art that correlate with each other so uh, it going to be very important and very interesting uh, topic to discuss here i am going to discuss very important very significant idea as far as our previous work is concerned and the present work uh, also like culture culture as i have discussed uh, through fanon's lens uh, in the ratchet of the earth and before edward said i want to revise your uh, uh, the journal idea uh, of culture for your better understanding Uh, students as i have discussed i have explained you that the culture is the art of living it also includes uh, the manifestations of human intellectual achievement and um, traditions our norms our heritage and uh, the customs the ideas the social behavior of particular people or society so culture is a way of life of uh, different groups of people and it is the excellence of taste in fine arts of humanities and it is integrated pattern of human knowledge human beliefs and human behavior so uh, here i have discussed some of the renowned persons opinion uh, or uh, sayings about culture uh, that karl marx uh, according to him culture depend upon class and economic condition and uh, he says that economic factor is very important part of human social life next is st coleridge and according to him Uh, he says that culture and civilization is very important in one's life and civilization according to him is general progress of society and he used culture to express a standard of perfection that is dependent on the progress of society that culture is the progress that is dependent on the perfection while civilization is the progress in general next is matthew arnold and uh, according to him culture depends largely on religious beliefs according to him he says that human society is divided into different religious communities next is the post colonial critic and author homi ke bhaba according to him a culture diversity and a uh, difference this is an epistemological construct culture and it is an object of empirical knowledge that talks about the knowledgeable and cultural identification according to him uh, that nation themselves are narrations uh, this is his book also and he uh, focuses the the main significance the main idea of culture in his work and the impact of post colonialism on one's culture also next is raymond william according to raymond william there are two forces in culture and in society first is democracy and second is industrialism according to him uh, the traditional notions are based on historical range the conceptual depth and textual quality that is designated by the concept of uh, literature and the concept of a uh, political and economical and historical factors so this is the general idea now uh, i'll discuss the the main idea or ideology of culture through the lens of edward said
In this slide, I'm going to discuss uh, Edward Said's view about culture. Like, uh, according to him, culture is a very complex but a strong phenomena in one's life. So he uh, says that there are two types of attitude towards culture. The first one is that consider culture as a concept that includes refining and elevating element and also each society's reservoir of best that has been known and thought. Secondly, uh, the other concept is that the aggressive and protectionist attitude uh, that, um, that view culture as a source of identity and differentiates between us and them. So, uh, that is con that concept is uh, somehow uh, the stubborn concept um, that is based on the aggressive and protectionist attitude uh, that consider culture as a source of identity, a source of uh, um, difference between us and them. And secondly, the power with which we can combat the influence of the foreign cultures. And uh, students, this attitude is opposed to liberal uh, philosophies as multiculturalism and hybridism. In post-colonial studies, we have um, read these terms, the multiculturalism and hybridism. And students, this is the attitude that often leads to a religious and nationalist fundamentalism. So this concept and this notion and this perceived cultural concept uh, becomes a protective enclosure that divorces us from every day world. Uh, here um, I remember a quote of Matthew Arnold. Uh, who says that culture palliates if it does not neutralized. Culture palliates if it does not neutralized. And uh, here uh, I can I want to relate this um, quote of Matthew Arnold with Edward Said's view of culture, who says that I have found it a challenge not to see culture in this way that is antiseptically quarantined from the worldly affiliation, but as an extraordinary field of endeavor. Here uh, you can see that set focused all those practices like the arts um, of description of uh, and art of description, communication and, and representation that have a relatively autonomy from social and political realm and its main principle is to uh, to take pleasure or to give pleasure so culture is very much associated with uh, our aesthetics with our thoughts and and it moves to generation to generation In this slide, I'm going to discuss the connection of culture with imperialism. Why Edward Said has connected culture with imperialism as he himself uh, defines culture as a more complex but strongly suggests that we ought not to forget imperialism while discussing culture. And uh, because his work, Culture and Imperialism, encapsulating his argument that empires prepare for colonist culture through their adoption of imperialist ideas. As according to uh, Edward Said, imperialism is a practice, a theory, an attitude of dominating metropolitan center ruling a distant territory. So uh, Edward Said explains um, like a cultural control is an other form of dominating and it is more subtle malicious force which can be considered in this modern context 
where imperialism is conceived only in terms of our historical memory. Although Edward Said says that this force of influence is not as easily detected and not as tangible or opposable as military force. It is a central component of the connection between culture and imperialism. On one hand, he says that imperialist uh, culture is not invisible nor it concealed in worldly affiliation and interest. So he says that there is a sufficient clarity in, the, in its major line, in culture's major line for us. And uh, on the other hand, he also says that one of the imperialism achievement was to bring the world close together. And although in this process, the separation between Europeans and natives uh, was an indicious and fundamentally unjust most of us should now regard the historical experience of empire as common one. So, he present both views that how imperialism is uh, positive and how it is negative in, in uh, discussing culture. As in previous slide, I was talking about uh, cultural control and uh, I said that cultural control is a malicious force and does not need any military force. So um, here you can say that uh, uh, the, the force of writers is necessary uh, for colonizing any land. And here in this slide, uh, I'll discuss the role of literature or the role of writers according to Edward Said. That is so important uh, to influence, to justify and to enhance one's position or a colonist position. So Edward Said discusses role of writer as he says that um, uh, the European writers on Africa, India, Ireland and other lands as part of European effort to rule distant land. He says that colonial and post-colonial fiction is central to his argument and uh, he sees it the, that uh, those writers present the colonized land as mysterious land inhabited by uncivilized barbarians uh, who understood only the language of violence and deserve to be ruled. So this is the myth representation of the native people and their culture and it need to be redressed. So Edward Said finds a connection between these narratives and imperial process of which they are a part. These writers ignore the important aspect of reality and the important aspect of native people and also their culture. So Edward Said says that uh, the role of writers uh, are very important uh, throughout this process of uh, colonization, decolonization and then post-colonialism and he says when they were conquering, they were producing papers to justify their agenda and um, here uh, I have quoted some of the famous phrases um, that, that uh, represent uh, their work like uh, the colonized areas are mysterious lands, the African mind is violent mind or the mysterious East. So basically this is this, uh, a slogan. Basically this is the agenda of colonists to um, how to um, justify their point, how to justify their, their step of colonization. Students, in this slide, uh, I'm going to discuss the two examples of Edward Said that how role of literature is important as far as uh, the, uh, the native uh, mentality is concerned or uh, the representation of colonist or uh, colonized um, mentality is concerned. So uh, he discussed uh, 
two novels in order to explain his view. The first one is Great Expectations by Charles Tikkan and the second one is Nostromo by Joseph Conrad. And uh, I'm sure that you have read these two novels uh, before in your masters. Uh, so here, first of all, I'm going to discuss Great Expectations that is primarily a story of Pip and his futile effort to become a gentleman. Once he helped the condemned victim, uh, uh, that is Abel Magwitch, who after being gone to Australia and pays Pip some amount and Magwitch reappears illegally in London after some time. So Pip does not welcome him and reflect him as an unpleasant criminal. So Magwitch is unacceptable being from Australia, a, uh, a panel colony that is designed for rehabilitation of English criminals. So here, uh, Edward Said appreciates this subject and according to him, the prohibition place the, or the prohibited place on Magwitch uh, returns is not only a panel but also the imperial and these ugly criminals could not be allowed to return to England, the land of decent people. Right? And the second example is of Joseph Conrad's Nostromo that is set in Central American Republic independent but it is dominated by outside interest um, because of its immense silver mines and in this novel the uh, 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 the character who is the American financer who says that we shall run the world's business whether the world likes it or not and this is the the basic the the true mentality of colonists and again he says that he says that uh, the world can't help it and neither we can I guess so, this is the journal thinking of imperialist. The new world order with its self-assumed responsibility of civilizing the world that seems to be originated from this thought. So, according to Edward Said, the problem with Conrad is that he writes as a man whose western view of non-western world is so uh, ingrained in as is to blind him to other histories, other cultures and other aspirations. So he observed that imperialists have changed the culture of India or Africa or South Africa. So Conrad allows the reader to see the imperial is a system that works in proper fashion to control their culture and identity. So according to this view, Edward Said considers Conrad both imperialist and anti-imperialist progressive in rendering the contribution of overseas domination deeply reactionary in ignoring the fact that africa and south america had independent history and culture in this slide i'm going to discuss colonist ideology according to edward said Edward Said presented his views on the basis of such literary works uh, that reflects Western policy of colonization. That West is the source of world significant action and life, while the rest of the world is mind deadened, having no life, history, or integrity of their own. So, here on page number 20, Edward Said has discussed Nostromo. Uh, and he says that uh, the idea of Conrad uh, that is discussed in this novel, like we Western will decide who is good native or bad. We created them, we taught them to speak and think and we, uh, and when they rebel, they simply confirm our views of them as silly children duped by some of their Western masters. So this is the effect what Americans have felt about their southern neighbors. So uh, English people uh, like 
colonial masters they have sense of superiority sense of pride uh, which um, uh, you have observed in an other novel uh, in which they said that even dogs and africans are not allowed in restaurant so they consider native people the african people or indian people same like the dog and uh, this is the ideology of colonist that he is the superior and mangu is inferior he is the shine while in, uh, mangu is clumsy and he is the pride and mangu is or clona, uh, clonized person is a uh, 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 slogan of shame so it is not like that these westerns had uh, no sympathy for the foreign culture but they have set themselves as slogan of civilized nation they advertise themselves as the other are brutes and it is their duty to civilize the brutes as uh, uh, in in previous slide i have discussed uh, a line that is so significant that we shall run the business whether the world likes it or not so the world has changed due to uh, imperialist globalization because whatever they uh, like uh, whatever colonizer go they advertise that they are the best in every aspect in their culture in fashion in language so in every aspect they are the best and this is uh the colonist ideology that is discussed by edward stait here uh, again i'm going to discuss colonist ideology uh, like uh, like the role of literature and uh, here i'm going to discuss joseph conrad's heart of darkness uh, heart of darkness is very important novel as far as colonist ideology is concerned here as edward said himself says that this imperial attitude is i believe beautifully captured in the complicated and rich narrative form of conrad's great novella heart of darkness written between 1898 and 1899 so um, these are some lines that uh, i have read from page number 24 of culture and imperialism so you can read all these lines uh, by your own self and here i just want to uh, discuss the agenda of european uh, that as uh, edward said himself says that uh, the waste and horror of european mission in the dark world that is africa and i'm sure that you have read this novel during your masters and this is page number 25 so here i am going to discuss the european act of colonization and their imperial mastery in africa by the following lines he says that the conquest of the earth which mostly means the taking it away from those who have a different complexion and slightly flattered noses than ourselves is not a pretty thing when you look into it too much what redeems it is an idea only an idea at the back of it not a sentimental pretense but an idea and an unselfish belief in the idea something you can set up and bow down before and offer a sacrifice to so this is it the imperial attitude of europeans and the misery or the helplessness of africans so this is the message that came out of the bottle that what is the idea the agenda of imperialist uh, the agenda of colonialist so here conrad encapsulated two quite different but intimately related aspect of imperialism first one is the idea that is based on power to take over ter territory and the second one is the practice that essentially disguised or obscures this by developing a justificatory regime of um, self originating authority so uh, 
so uh, first of all they are doing injustice and secondly they are justifying that injustice so uh, i think this is very important uh, novel as far as uh, the colonization and uh, imperialism is concerned so uh, you have page number 80 82 uh, i suggest you to read these lines carefully and make your own points so uh, here is the overview of culture and imperialism uh, here in this uh, collection of essays culture and imperialism edward said use the literary lens discussing classical realistic narrative fiction works and authors focusing uh, culture and impact of imperialism or colonialism so he explains his scholarly approach nothing that his discussion seeks to expose and inform readers rather than criticize or condemn these works instead said aims to actively acknowledge the imperialist and colonialist ideas embedded uh, within these work as a means of demonstrating how that cultural climate operated and evolved thus enabling a deeper understanding of both history and literature so um, edward said doesn't criticize Uh, but to endorse the ideas to show how one's identity is more or less determined by one's relationship with other countries or the third world countries so he carefully considers uh, that many of the authors uh, were merely portraying the values and opinion of time period rather than making any political argument so uh, uh he discussed the uh, the the aspect like the political position the cultural climate or uh, the ideas uh, shifted the subject matters the tones of the writer uh, so edward said is not criticizing here uh, these essays are um, based on his observation his philosophy um, as a writer as a critic so uh, culture in imperialism is fantastic um fantastic book that is based on his philosophy here are two questions uh, uh, for you people that uh, first one is what are the definitions of culture and what definitions are accepted by site as uh, in my previous lecture and in the start of this lecture i have presented the journal ideology of culture that that is accepted by all and then we have discussed culture uh, according to the view of uh, different critics and then the view of edward said we have discussed culture as nationalism as behavior as norms and imperialism also that affect culture so a uh, culture is we can say it uh, the chauvinism the aggressive uh, attitude or the aggressive patriotism and uh, uh, we can also say uh, culture as the prejudiced behavior like uh, we are pakistani so we have to hate india this is nationalism that uh, this is uh, called nationalism in positive sense but uh, this is also called the prejudiced behavior and the next uh, question is what is the role of western novel in advertising the western culture here i have discussed only two novels um, that is referred by edward said uh, in the introduction of culture and imperialism the first one is a uh, great expectations and the second one is uh, nostromo by joseph conrad so uh, here i want to just add a point that when 
19th uh, during 19th century when britishers were colonizing uh, the land uh, different lands so the novels of britishers advocate the cause of their colonization they uh, justify uh, their agenda through their literature and uh, we can say that like sophocles or like dickens they uh, they uh, they does not address poor people uh, or the people who who were in suffering or um, or other agenda of social life so uh, in these two questions i think the introduction of culture and imperialism uh, is completed and uh, you can very well elaborate your ideas through these two questions